Now that we've taken a look at lighting on the other tabs, you'll notice some familiar stuff over on this right hand side of the screen. You've got the fader, right, which is the slider, as you call it, up and down, like that. Okay, and you've got a bottom color and a top color. Now that's very similar to the left color and right color that we had on the knobs, but it's the what's above the fader position and what's below it. I'm gonna choose the music fader on channel two here to give you the example, because I wanna keep my mic still up at full volume so you can hear it. We can say what's below. Okay, it's gonna be this pinky purple color. Let's put another color above. Let's put the blue color. And now you can see that the room I have left to go is up here, and as I slide up, with my music and down with my music, it fills that in. There's a couple of cool ways that you can adjust this too. You can actually make a gradient out of it. So if you hit gradient, you won't see it on the screen here, but on the actual unit itself, you'll see it's made a gradient between the bluest blue of the top and the most pinky pink at the bottom there. And it does a gradient in between them, which looks really neat. The other mode that you can have for it is a meter mode. And that meter just shows the level of audio input coming in. I'm gonna use the mic to show you this one. So I'm gonna put it into meter mode and you'll watch that my fader stays at the same place, but now you'll start seeing the audio levels jump up and down. So here I go. And now my audio levels are jumping up and down here. As I speak, you see them go up. And as I don't speak, they go away. And I can also apply gradient. And so I will apply a gradient to that with say a green at the top and a red at the bottom. And then I get this weird orangey color thing going. Let's try blue and light blue. Hey, there we go. You got a cool gradient there, like blue to orange. The meter mode tends to work the best with your mic. Typically music is very compressed, which means it only operates in a very small range. And you might only see it dipping up and down by a couple of little clicks there. Whereas your microphone is much more dynamic and goes up and down. So it's a good place to try the meter mode there. So that covers the differences in lighting and the little special features uh, on this side. Now we go to this whole side over here where we have the screen. So let's talk about what we do to set it up. There's a few different options. So right here, you've got your preview window. You've chosen the channel you want to operate on. Same thing you did when you were doing the settings and it's highlighted it here. We're working on this one and we've got a display. So in the preview, it says invert display. Well, now we can invert it if we want, which means it gets a black background and everything that was black is white and everything's white is black and it flips around. Now, sometimes that looks really cool and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on what you're using at the time. I'm going to uninvert it. It says display number. It has channel one, right? So we have channel one here. It's got the one. I kind of don't like that. I'm going to take it away. Now we look at the display color and they can be independent. So you see, I have one blue one now and three of the pinky ones we can totally do that. If we want, I'm going to bring them back in line with each other. Then you have the icon okay? and when you, you can take the icon away if you want. So you got this little tick box here. I don't want the icon. I just want text. And what do I want it to say? I want it to say Mike. Well, how big do I want it to be? I want it to be small, medium or large. And now you can see that Mike is large written right in the middle there. I'm going to actually go away from the text here. Okay. And I'm going to give you an example of like what I would do if I was going to say, put a different logo up here. So now I actually have a blank screen. Imagine that channel one was actually my chat channel. I wanted to get the discord icon. I wanted to put it right on there. I click on the icon here and it brings up a little window. These ones are preloaded, but you can actually bring your own files in. So I've gone online and I looked for <laughs> discord icon, black and white. And I found this one. And then I got it to go big and I right clicked it and I went save image as and I saved it to my desktop. Okay? I have literally done nothing fancier than that for finding game logos or anything you want. You could do it with your own logos, if you've got stream logos, any of that kind of stuff. Now you can either drag and drop the icon to this window or for me, I'm just going to click it here and I know I saved it on my desktop. There it is, discord icon. I'm going to click open. Now I've got the discord icon there. Now, if the if the icon is uh, a different size or a different shape than what we've got over here, you might want to crop it. So you can actually click the crop tool and you could bring things in. This is pretty tight, but I'm going to actually bring in the top and the bottom here so that it's as tight as it can be to the top and bottom of that icon. What that does is allows me to maximize the space that I'm using in here. Once I'm done, I just hit the little save button here. And now you'll notice this discord icon is part of my whole system here and it will be there stored in its folder. You don't have to worry about it. You just always have access to it. I'm going to click it and pow, there you go. You've got your discord icon right in the middle. Um, this alpha thing here is if you have something that has uh, different gradients in it. So if you, if you brought in a picture that was a bit more complex, this was quite a simple icon. So we were able to replicate it perfectly on the screen. But if you brought in something that was more complex, you can actually use the alpha 
and it's gonna fade away the picture based on the levels of um, black and white information that are in there or grayscale information that's in there. Um, or if it's a color image, it'll work on those colors to, to fade them in and out. You can kind of tweak with the alpha to make sure that you can get a picture that is the most legible on the screen. Obviously the resolution of these things isn't, you know, like a little crazy OLED display. So it does have a limited resolution and you can use that alpha to get the best out of it that you can. So that will give you your opportunity to put whatever you want onto these uh, onto these screens. And keep in mind, each profile carries its own version of the icons. Uh, so you can use whatever you want on each individual profile. Uh, you can see if, uh, if we load up another profile here, you know, all those icons just change from what they were, including all the colors of the box and stuff as well. There you have it. That's the advanced lighting on the mixer.